This is Warhammer like you've never seen it before. Welcome to Dawn of War Warhammer. Since 2004, this little space marine has always dreamt one hobby dream, to bring Dawn of War to the tabletop. Now, I don't just mean lining up some blood ravens and orcs and whacking them together. I want a game of Warhammer exactly like the greatest Warhammer video game of all time. I'm talking base building. Mustering an army. Marine squad deployed. Upgrade. Light of the Emperor! Map control, exploration. Captured. And above all, a fully functional Dawn of War economy built right on top of Warhammer 40k. Today kicks off our first battle report in a brand new narrative campaign right here on Zorphammer. To me, my brothers. We've got an absolute monster of a game on our brand new 72 square foot Dawn of War gaming table in which the mighty Blood Ravens must exterminate an orc infestation. Let me out of we'll be playing a custom narrative scenario inspired by the missions from the campaign in the first Dawn of War video game, which is designed to showcase our new Dawn of War rule set. This rule set is an overlay, which means you can use it with whatever wargaming system you like. But with Warhammer 40k 10th edition hot off the press, it's time for some 40k action. We'll take you through the rules as our battle gets underway, but first, let's set the scene. On the planet Tartarus, war is raging as a savage orc war devours the planet. On the outskirts of an Imperial Manufactorum on the plains of Dera, Gabriel Angelos, captain of the Blood Ravens, has established a forward command post to wipe out two orc strongholds. This planet is ours. The two orc clans must be destroyed before they can join the full-scale war and besiege the nearby spaceport. Commanding the Paragons of the Imperium is me, Loki of Zorphammer. It's time to wipe out this orc infestation. And going green today is my right-hand man, Bo, from Zorpazor. Let's crush some space marines. As with every Dawn of War game, the Blood Ravens start with their stronghold, the HQ building for the Space Marine faction. This base of operations generates 100 requisition and 30 power every single turn and must be defended at all costs. If the Orcs destroy the stronghold, the Blood Ravens are finished. It also lets us build the Space Marine Scout Squad. Scouts awaiting orders. Each turn, a player may perform one build action in each zone they control. Loki's first building to join the mighty Imperial Outpost is the Chapel Barracks, which costs 250 requisition and will allow the Blood Ravens to access their most vital military units. Each turn, a building can add one action to its action queue. Some actions take several turns to resolve. A Scout Squad build order resolves immediately, and the unit may act as normal the turn it arrives. The scouts performed an advanced move rolling to add 5 inches to their base movement and headed off to secure the closer strategic point. The second building added to the base is the all-important power generator. This costs 135 requisition but adds a bonus of 50 power per turn. Marine squad deployed. With the barracks in operation, the most important Blood Raven unit joins the field, the first Space Marine squad. Fear denies faith. For 45 requisition, the Scout Squad gained its third member, leaving us with 500 requisition for next turn. Knowing we desperately need to boost our resources, the Marine Squad headed north towards the distant second strategic point, while the Scouts began to capture CP-1 next to the Chapel Barracks. Turn 3 saw Loki build the Armoury. He's burning up his starting requisition pretty aggressively, but it's incredibly important to get the Blood Ravens equipped to deal with the Orc Menace. Position secure. Luckily, the scouts completed capturing CP1, generating a 100 requisition capture bonus. While held by the Ravens, that CP will now generate 100 requisition per turn. A fourth member for the scouts, and they advance beyond the starting area to make ground on CP3 in the center of the board. Stay vigilant, brothers. Orders received. The Marine squad got their first new member and advanced towards CP2, but soon realized they were not alone. Green skin. Our battle report today is following the Blood Raven, so the Orc units operate behind a fog of war, just like the video game. Bo has a secret spreadsheet and whiteboard for tracking his forces and resources, and whenever my units come within 12 inches of a hidden Orc unit, they are revealed and may immediately make an Overwatch attack. A lot of shooter boys are sneaking up to capture this point. We've actually discovered the Space Marines moving in, so we're going to use our Overwatch attack. It's needing sixes because of Overwatch. Here we go. 
Only the one six coming in there, but you need fours to wound with that shooter. There we go. Got the wound. So just the one wound. Let's see if I can make a big three and keep the squad clean. Look at that, big six. Let's get him! After advancing in the move phase, the Marine squad was unable to return fire, so we proceeded to our first orc turn. It now belongs to the orcs! Bo chose to begin by securing the strategic point, which then forfeited any further actions for his shooter boys. Behind the fog of war, the orcs performed some other sneaky maneuvers organized by Bo's trusty whiteboards and spreadsheets that are hidden behind the studio curtain and out of my line of sight. Marine squad deployed. A second Space Marine squad deployed from the barracks and performed a standard move to enable them to coordinate fire support with their brothers, who themselves received a new squad member and pushed up to unload at point blank range. For the glory of the Imperium. It's time to kick these pesky orcs off that objective with some pretty sustained bolter fire. I've got my squad up the back coming in hot. We're looking for threes to hit. And now I get to re-roll my two failed misses because this orc unit is subject to my oath of moment for this turn. Can I stack it up? Only an extra one. That is seven hits coming in. Fives to wounds. Oh, wow. That's only a single save for you, Bo. Oh no. Oh, get him out of He's there. Done. Who is getting shot up? This time I've got 12 shots with this squad here. We need to soften them up before our big charge. Again, I'll be re-rolling any misses, which is lucky because I've missed with more than half. My Marines are a bit wobbly so far. Ah, uh, that's a bit better. Three saves for Bo this time. We're under attack! <laughs> Why don't they die? As this Marine squad didn't advance this turn, I can charge, which is 2d6 very comfortably piling in. The last two orc boys were eviscerated. Bo's gambit to stall the Blood Raven economy by delaying their capture of CP2 had failed. Strategic point identified. Earlier in the turn, our faithful scout squad had pushed up onto the southern flank, and with no Xenos threat now revealed, we'll proceed to the next Blood Raven turn. In turn 5, I chose to begin some of the most critical pieces of research for the Blood Raven's forces. The first, heavy weapon capacity increase. This takes a full turn to process in the Armoury's action queue, but will allow us to begin adding some serious firepower to our Space Marine squads in future turns. Yes, my lord. My newest squad, Bravo, then pushed up to the center, advancing two inches to stay within range to support either of my flanking units, whilst Alpha Squad consolidated onto CP2 and began to secure the point. Strategic point identified. Captured. In the south, the scouts advanced, eager to add CP3 to our burgeoning economic resources, but Bo had a little surprise in store. We'll fill them full of holes! <laughs> All right, the scouts have discovered my first orc building. I've got two squads of boys coming up here. I'm going to use Overwatch, lay some fire down on these cheeky scouts. I should roll three sixes. Here we go for the wounds. Oh, very nice. These orcs are everywhere. So three wounds on my scout squad. Let's see if I can keep the boys intact. I'm only on a four plus save. Two ones. The first Blood Raven casualty. And it's a novitiate. That makes sense. Again, the Blood Ravens have been caught wrong-footed. As the scouts have already advanced this turn, they are unable to return fire. So the Orcs get a huge advantage and surge into their own turn with two units active. Both Orc units moved up and unloaded into the scouts, killing a second Novitiate before charging into combat. In Warhammer 40k, units who charge gain the fight first bonus, allowing the orc shooters, now with a brutish knob of their own, to cleave apart the poor young blood ravens before they even had a chance to draw their combat knives. We better be going to a fight! So we are five turns deep here into the dawn of war and things are hotting up. We've got this little insurgent orc presence up here on the plateau. And of course, my first objective is the orc stronghold down there in the Manufactorum. And things are looking a little bare. I've lost my scouts and I've only got two Space Marine squads. I think I need some more reinforcements and I need to manage some more upgrades, but resources are getting tight. This is going to be a tough little period for the Blood Ravens. After the armory is built, Marine squads can be upgraded with sergeants, and Bravo also deployed our first heavy weapon, a heavy bolter. Stay vigilant, brothers. On our northern flank, Alpha Squad equipped a flamer. Light of the Emperor! 
and pushed forwards towards our primary objective, revealing yet another hidden orc threat in the fog of war. Now's your time for tearing things up. The orc slugger boys don't pack much punch, but their Overwatch managed to score a cheeky wound on Alpha Squad. Taking damage. The enemy is attacking. Back at base, it was time to deploy a brand new troop choice from the chapel barracks, the Assault Marines, who made an advanced move, giving them a whopping 16-inch leap over their squad Bravo brothers to strengthen the Blood Raven center. Death from above. So I've got a bit of a chance here to put out some pretty reasonable firepower. We've got heavy weapons on the field. We're going to start with that by splitting off my heavy bolter. And he's going to use his extended range to come and hit these boys up here on the checkpoint. I've got three dice. I'm hitting on threes because I haven't moved and it's a heavy weapon. Oh, ho, ho! I've got two sixes on the hit roll. And because of sustained hits, that gives me an additional two hits. So that is five shots from my heavy bolter. I'll be wounding on fours with that's strength five. Three wounds at AP minus one. Here we go. Oh, get him off. They're shooting us. We're losing. The rest of the bolters are going to fire through this barricade into these newly discovered slugger boys. But you do have the benefit of cover here. Oh, that's, that's not great. Fives to wound. I haven't even yielded another save. Let's see if the second squad over here can do a bit better. My newly equipped flamer is going to do D6 hits on these orcs well within range. Five automatic hits. Straight to wounding. Only one. And now we'll do our bolters. Threes to hit. And chasing fives to wounds. You're joking! <laughs> Two saves for you, Bo. It's trash. So the toughest five kept me alive for this turn, so hopefully we only need two five pluses. Oh, Here we you're go. Kidding. Still alive. With a whole bunch of orcs inside the revealed parts of the board, we've got a horde of greenskin actions. On the southern flank, Bo moved up the shooter boys and then reinforced the slugger boys and advanced moved them up in support to keep applying pressure to the Blood Raven home sector. Wake up, boys! It's time for fighting! But in the center, the orc menace increased as an orc truck burst through the fog and deployed another squad of shooter boys. Eager to get stuck into the homies, the northern slugger boys charged in and unloaded their pistols at point blank range. Fives to hit, fours to wound in the second roll. One, it's all right, it's all right, going for the wound. Nothing, I'm happy with that. Well, there's a few more orcs who are going to unload as well. Some sneaky shooter boys. Uh, are you going to go for the Assault Marines or through to the Tacticals, Bo? We're going straight for the Assault Marines. They're going to be the most dangerous. Don't want them jumping in behind us, so let's go for it. Just one! <laughs> I've gone for the comfortable one hit, but that's all right. That's all we need. Oh, there we go, there we go. And we're gravy. Now these guys up here did advance so there'll be no more shooting, but I think we're gonna have a charge on Bo. We sure do. We're gonna charge these boys right in the front here. So I've got my chopper boys in. 21 dice to try and wipe them from the board. Here we go. Needing threes. Oh man, that's 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 pretty fierce. 14. <laughs> what? Right. We're going for 14 wounds from that. I'm really hoping I can wipe this squad. Nine wounds. I need my three up save here to do me well. Come on, Blood Ravens. So three wounds total, and with one model already wounded, that is two tactical marines down, and the power claw hasn't even swung yet. Let's get him! Didn't get quite as many kills as I wanted, but here comes the power claw. Let's see if we can get something. Oh, oh, two's to wound here, Bo. Can we do? Oh, oh yes, yes, one. I needed that. Only one wound coming through. That's massive. This is AP minus two, so I need a five to pass, and if I fail, each wound is two damage, which is a dead space marine. Let's give me a big five here. Oh, it's a five! Only the two marines from that charge, and now... I'm gonna get to fight back. Orcs is never beaten in battle. Pretty simple for me. Five Marines, 10 attacks, threes and fives. Let's try and take a few Orcs down. Eight through, fives to wound. Who armor saves? The Tacticals only managed a single dead Orc in retaliation and with the Orc threats on the board rapidly growing, the next Blood Raven turn is going to be crucial to wresting control of the center line of the board. 
Luckily, after two full turns of holding two strategic points and a fairly low power spend so far, we begin the turn with 620 requisition and 350 power, so it's time to spend big on our next building, the all-important machine cult. I then gave my marine squad Alpha and my assault marines a sergeant, as well as the second heavy bolter and a new standard marine to squad Bravo as they secure the flank. The assault squad leapt over the low barricades behind the Manufactorum to bear down upon the Slugger Boys, and Bravo squad again stayed put to give the heavy bolters their stationary firing bonus. Space Marines attack! If you love the look of this Dawn of War battlescape or these two armies, make sure you head on over to Zorpazorp to check out the full hobby journey of bringing this campaign to life. And if you guys at home want to play Dawn of War Warhammer, if these first two battle reports do well enough, I'm going to release like a full how to play video right here on Zorphammer, sort of maybe in a few months. But in the meantime, the first draft kind of alpha playtesting version of the rules is available to download from my Patreon, link down in the description and the comments and that's also just a great way to support this project so that we even have a shot at making future seasons beyond these first two episodes of Dawn of War Warhammer. Two heavy bolters uh, stationary, so threes to hit and one six. So five hits with that bonus hit from sustained fire and now we need fours to wound. Strength five, toughness five, three saves. They would have been at AP minus one, uh, but those orcs are in cover up on the hill. Uh, so it's just your normal armor save there, Bo. Any fives. Commencing attack. We're under attack! Four bolters left on the exposed shooter boys at the top of the ramp. We need threes. Uh, oh, that is absolute rubbish, but luckily these guys are affected by my oath of moment for this turn. They're the closest orcs to the base. They've got to go. So we're re-rolling our hits, uh, and it yields me an extra two fives to wound with that orc toughness. It is killing me. I swear they used to be toughness four, but three fives punching through. Three saves. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh very nice. Die, scum! We gotta go! For the glory of the Imperium. For the Emperor. Charge! Engaging the enemy. Commencing attack. None shall stop us. A pretty easy charge for my assault marines, but we need to wipe these orcs so we can get over here and ruin this infested orc compound here. But first, I've got my Hammer of Wrath attack from the momentum of my assault marines charging a 4+. And needing a four, that's a two, so no mortal wound there from Hammer of Wrath, but I have 20 attacks I'm fighting first because of my charge bonus. Let's see if we can splice these orcs apart. Threes to hit. There's nowhere near as many as I was hoping for. Now, because Loki's chainsaws are AP minus one, my save goes down to six. Not great. Oh, you, oh, you got one, got you one. got one. Eight chainsaws! Let's get out of here! Death from above, commencing attack. Before my tactical marines get to strike, Bo's orcs get a chance to do some last damage. What have you got for us, Sweet. Bo? Sweet, so we've got the power claw, so we're going to need fours of that on the black dice, threes on the rest. Oh, I Whoa. see two fours at least. Oh, that's awesome. Convert. Power claw doing the work. Oh, no. Hit him hard, boys. This is not so good. Uh, the choppers, I've got three wounds from them at AP minus one, so we're chasing fours. Let's start there. It's the least scary. And I've. It's still pretty scary. Okay, that is three wounds. That's already one dead tactical and one wounded. And now I've got the power claw. Uh, these are at AP minus two, so this is fives, and every fail is a dead marine, basically. Oh, come on, boys. Oh, we, got, we lost another one. Okay, the tactical squad is just getting battered. I have a sergeant with a chainsaw, so that takes me up to 10 attacks, but I haven't upgraded him, so there's no power weapon effect here. We just got raw damage. And we are looking for threes to hit. That is solid. Fives to wounds. And that is nothing. <laughs> These orcs are tying me up. For well, the Emperor. Charge. We are still tied down, and things are going from bad to worse, with the Orcs pushing down from strategic point three, getting equipped with a big shooter, and sprinting down to really threaten SP1, with the Slugger Boys getting reinforced and launching forwards hot on their heels. 
The Shooter Boys from the truck got upgraded with another power claw wielding knob and launched forwards to join the nearby combat. Luckily, the orc shooting was a joke, with the Shooter Boys and the truck harmlessly plinking away at Bravo Squad before the truck boys got stuck in, surging into combat. <laughs> Without that many numbers, the dice went against them, only killing one tactical marine and wounding the assault squad before losing a shooter boy and the slugger knob in return. Squad destroyed! This is the turn we flip this match on its head. Up first was an important upgrade at the Stronghold. I spent 125 requisition to increase my vehicle cap, and the first vehicle to deploy from the machine cult is the one and only Dreadnought. Your end is at hand. Marine Squad Alpha gained a new member, and then the Dread ambled forward to support them. To me, my brothers. Closer to home, things are looking a little dicey, so I reinforced Bravo with a third heavy bolter and a new marine, and fed up with their static deployment, they surged forwards, forfeiting their stationary shooting bonus in favour of pushing back the orc threat at all costs. The best defence is a good offence. These orcs are threatening big time, and I'm just going to blow them away and burst on through on them. So the tactical squad, which now has three heavy bolters, is going to try and eviscerate these two squads, and then get in there and get amongst them. So the heavy bolters first, all targeting the slugger boys up the back. I've got nine attacks now, but I am hitting on fours because we have moved and they are heavy. This unit at the back though is the target of my oath of moment, so I can re-roll five misses. We need a, a few more than that. Fours to wound. I have got one, two, three saves for the orcs, and now I'm gonna pile in with my bolters as well. Eight shots from the bolters, plus one from the bolt pistol. These are hitting on threes. Rerolling my misses. Hey, that's what I needed with the heavies. And a few more saves for the orcs now. Who is getting shot up? Squad destroyed. So my bolt pistols finished off a couple of the orcs here in this squad, but our last big action for the shooting phase is my Dreadnought, who has a multi-melter, which is sort of breaking the Dawn of War laws, but if you've seen the army vlog, you'll know why that is. So let's embrace it. Multi-melter, two shots. So we've got a juicy target here with this truck. We need threes to hit. That's two hits. And we need threes to wound, and each successful wound is D6 plus two damage from Melter 2. Let's put a hole in this orc truck. We've got two threes. That's 2d6 plus 2, and 3, 6, 9, that is 13 wounds. Nine, nine. Your end is at hand. Feel my wrath. I will crush those who stand before me. I will crush you. All who oppose his will must die. Weapons at ready. It is time. Maintain attack formation. Identifying targets, I have waited long for this day. Well, the Dread and that side have done the business. We've got one charge left. It's this bad boy over here. This tactical squad, they're very comfortably making it, and they are going to pile in on these poor little shooters. Now, they're just tactical marines, but, you know, they're no slouches. Let's see if we can eviscerate these guys. I've got my chainsaw first from my uh, sergeant in there. He's got four dice hitting on threes, uh, and he'll be wounding on fives, and that is just one save for the orcs, and then just my normal marines, 14 attacks. Hopefully we can finish this squad off. And that's a lot of threes. So I need a lot of fives here. And we have got them, my goodness. After an absolutely vicious round of combat, seeing all nine remaining revealed orcs beyond the fog absolutely slaughtered, the Blood Ravens consolidated forwards, and with Bo's sneaky plans for the time being still hidden in shadow, we proceed directly to the ninth Blood Raven turn. The new building this turn, a sorely needed power generator. With more vehicles on the horizon, we desperately need a boost in the power sector of our economy. Next at the armory, I grabbed the first power weapon upgrade. This upgrades every single sergeant's chainsaw to a power sword and gives our force commander Gabriel Angelos his mighty thunder hammer. But we'll see him a bit later on. Terror! Bravo reinforced an advance move towards SP3 and took a moment to pray to the Emperor as they passed the butchered remains of their novitiates and then began to secure the strategic point. Take and hold. Though they will soon have some company. These bikers aren't just a credible threat, but the vanguard of something more sinister. Through the static imbued feeds of the Marine Squad optics, a new set of orc markings can be seen. Not the war boss of the closest infestation, but the greatly feared Big Mech Cogfist Steel Snapper. 
In the north, however, the Blood Ravens must eliminate the first orc threat, and looming in the fog beyond is an orc stronghold of significant hidden strength. Stealing their courage, Marine Squad Alpha, now supported by their ancient dreadnought, surge forwards between the two manufactorums, bolters at the ready. The assault squad then revved their chainswords and leapt deep into enemy territory, but didn't advance just in case a charge was called for. As the fog rolled back, the onboard sensors of the Marines were temporarily blown to static before oral dampeners kicked in to modulate and reveal an almighty war. Form up, lousy runts! Bo's forces had not been idle in preparing for the inevitable assault, and the Blood Ravens find themselves ferociously outmatched with two Killicans, two squads of Shooter Boys, a squad of Looters, and then the Warboss himself with three trusty knobs. The jaws of the Orc Beast are about to close on the Space Marine Vanguard. Now, our Dawn of War rules require a lot of units to be able to change their loadouts during the course of the game. Sergeants can upgrade their chainswords to power swords and even power fists, their bolt pistols to plasma, Marines get new heavy and special weapons. Light of the Emperor! And even vehicles have complex loadout options like the Space Marine Predator, which can swap out its auto cannon and heavy bolters for mighty LAS cannons. Now, I didn't want to have to buy triples of everything to do all of those loadouts, so we got some help from today's sponsor, the almighty Magnet Baron, the official sponsor of the Dawn of War Warhammer campaign. Because magnets, they just solve everything. If you need magnets for your wargaming, then look no further than the MagnetBaron.com, your DIY super magnet home. MagnetBaron.com have a huge range of wargaming magnets which are super powerful and even have specific kits for notoriously difficult to magnetize models, magnetize movement trays, and magnetize collapsible flight stands for the epic travel wargaming experience. I challenge you to find a better feeling in all of wargaming than the pure bliss of this moment. Magnetic Perfection so to score some boss wargaming magnets for all your army needs, hit up the magnetbaron.com, link down in the description, and a big shout out to Constantine who runs the Magnet Baron. He's an absolute legend. It's not often you'll find a sponsor willing to support content on a brand new channel, so go and show him some love. All right, so I've saved my Overwatch, so I'm gonna get a nice little ambush on this Dreadnought, hoping to wipe him very soon. This is what we like best! I've got two rocket launchers, so we're gonna see how many shots we've got. Oh, not great. Not great, so that's only two because they're D3 each. Now you are overwatching, so it's still sixes to hit. All right, here we go. Come on, get me something special. Yes, no. this plan has not paid off. Yep, we're gonna launch our big shooters straight into the assault marines. Hopefully we can get a few casualties there. Sixes, here we go. Oh, one. Here we go. No. no! The ambush has done nothing! This is gonna be quite the mission. I got pretty lucky there with that Overwatch. The Dreadnought is untouched. I need to somehow soften them. But first, the Dreadnought himself is gonna use his multi-melter and hopefully melt uh, this killer can, which is probably gonna mince my Assault Marine. So, two hits, threes to hit once again. Where are we gonna roll this bow? There's too many buildings. What about in here? It is good. Two shots, and we have hit with both. Uh, we are wounding on uh, threes again because I've got that high strength, only toughness six for the can. That is two wounds and once again d6 plus two damage because it is a vehicle. That is five, eight, twelve wounds from the multi-melter and one eviscerated killer can. A killer can. <laughs> we'll move on to the tactical squad next. Now they've just got a bolter and a bolt pistol, both in range, but most importantly, a flamer. D6 auto hitting hits with torrent. Let's see what we can do. We have got two. Okay, that's not particularly great. And then aside from that, it's basically a bolter now. So strength four shots coming in. Let's see if we hit with the first three from the bolter and the pistol. We hit with two. We're chasing fives to wound on this strength four weaponry, and we've forced two armor saves from all of that. Hopefully, we can take one or two of those looters down. Here we go. No, Nothing. not again. So it's two orcs dead, but luckily I can keep both the rocket launchers. Hoping we can get some hits on that dreadnought next turn. We hurt the looters, we killed a can, but the war boss and his knobs are still there, and that unit is only gonna get bigger as Bo reinforces it, so I've gotta do something about it now. The only thing I can do is charge. So my assault marines are going in strong, they need seven inches to fly up over the terrain. We've got a rolling box now. It's just getting too wild amongst all these massive buildings. Two sixes. 
They are flying straight up into the war boss. Let's get him, boys. Activating jump back to the skies. Death from above. Eighteen sword! Four attacks with my sergeant's new power sword after we upgraded it this turn. He needs threes to hit, and he's got four, and he has done quite nicely hitting with three. He would normally need fours to wound, but because the knobs have the special rule, the bosses lads, when the war boss is attached to them, you get minus one from your wound roll. So I'm subtracting one from all of these rolls, essentially. So chasing fours, which all go down. So I've scored a single wound with the power sword. Now I've got my 16 attacks from the Astartes chain swords. Threes to hit. And I've, oh, I've got a couple. I've got three. So a couple of saves from the swords and one from the power sword. My well-planned ambush is not going so well. He's now come after me, knobs. <laughs> Fives and sixes, here we go. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, just a single wound. That's not even a whole model. Infuriated by the cheek of the pesky flying Umis, the war boss and his knobs hacked back at the assault marines, killing the entire squad and consolidating down to support the killer camp. Boss now. This is going to be a massive turn for the orcs, and Bo kicked it off by zooming his bikers up to get a clear line of fire on Bravo squad. Under fire. The shooters at the rear of the base advanced. Moving out, we go! The killer can ambled forwards, and the looters and the can combined to chip two wounds off the dreadnought with cheeky rockets before the can launched into the tactical marines to try and wipe them out before they could reinforce. With a whir of blades, two marines fell, but the sergeant stood tall against the orc menace. Turn 10 for the Blood Ravens, and it's another power generator, mainly to grab that 100 power build bonus to give me enough to marshal some truly armored might. But first we need another upgrade to our vehicle cap because our next vehicle is an absolute beast. The Predator zoomed off the machine cult and pulled up right behind the Blood Raven Vanguard to lay down some firepower. Going straight to the front line. At the chapel barracks, the assault squad was reborn and they advanced forwards, unable to use their super jump on the turn they arrived. For the Emperor, engaging the enemy. Objective log. Position secure. Captured. Who needs infantry? It's time for the armor to do the work. I've got my Predator, and my Dreadnought is of course still here as well, but the Pred is here to support him. We're gonna start by opening fire with the Sponsons, two heavy bolters, into the Warboss and his knobs. I'm hitting on threes even though I've moved. The Predator's just that good. Uh, and because the Oath of Moment is targeting the Warboss's unit this turn, I can reroll my two misses, and I have hit with everything. I'm strength five, wounding on fours. And we love that. No, we don't. It's three. It's three saves. We're losing. One knob is wounded, so he'll go. And then this knob is wounded as well. We're chipping away. Right. So now it's time for the Predator Auto Cannon. And we are swiveling our turret away from the knobs and towards our first objective, this Orc Stronghold. Now this building actually has two different profiles for the top level and for the bottom. I'm going to start by targeting the top. It is Toughness 7 with six wounds. But my Predator Auto Cannon is in rapid fire range. So he goes up to six shots. He's going to be hitting on threes. Oh, that's not bad. So five hits, strength nine, toughness seven, that is threes to wound, and each of these wounds does D3 damage. I've got one, two, three wounds. We need this D3 to deliver. We're looking for six wounds to blast this top section off. We have got two, three, six, eight wounds. He is blasted out of here. The resulting explosion incinerated the orc looters, but we're not home just yet. Hammer them till they fall. I'm really enjoying blowing things up, so I'm just gonna continue. It's the Dreadnought's time now. He's got his multi-melter and he's gonna open up into the lower level of the building, which is a little stronger. So we're probably just gonna wound it this turn, but let's see if we can put some damage in. I need threes to hit. I've got a one and a four, so just the one. Strength nine, defense seven, so threes to wound. And that's one wound, so damage D6 plus two because of the melter two rule, and I have put 
two plus two, that is four wounds chipped off the bottom level. And now, as that's the end of my shooting phase, we're gonna go straight into our beautiful Dreadnought's charge. I think I'm gonna play the objective here, and I'm gonna try and put a few holes in the wall before those knobs really catch up. So, 2d6 to charge. I've got a one and a four, it's just enough! I've just reached the corner of the building. Glad I didn't go for the knobs. Let's see what his power claw can do. Your end is at hand. The bottom level of the orc stronghold has 12 wounds to begin with. We blasted off four with the multi-melter. We need to score eight more to blow it up this turn. I've got five attacks. I did not know this thing was so good. Dreadnought close combat weapon. I've got threes to hit. I hope I haven't jinxed myself. I hope I haven't jinxed myself. Oh, no, you God. That's the worst roll I've ever seen. Have a look at this bow. <laughs> I think the uh, I think the Orc Stronghold is going to be living to fight another day somehow. Not a single hit. With my dread distractedly pounding the ground next to him repeatedly, the Killer Can minced the last member of Alpha Squad and consolidated towards the lumbering behemoth, thirsting for some Grot Walker shanking. And in the Orc turns, my poor ancient warrior was encircled by foes. Just when I thought things couldn't look any worse, a menacing war cry echoed from beyond beyond the fog of war. A massive contingent of orcs from the second clan loyal to Big Mech, Cogfist, Steel Snapper had made the long journey on foot and track across the board and arrived to aid their fellow Greenskins. The reinforcements are getting here but they're not going to be much of a help this turn. All I can do is try and take out this Dreadnought. So first we're going to charge in. Can we get there? Yes. Moving in with these guys. War boss has made it. Gonna start with the killer cannon, needing fours to hit, threes to wound. Two down, can we get there? Nothing, Nothing. you need fives, no. all right. Kane has choked. But hopefully our war boss's power claw could be a little more successful. Oh, nice man, all right. You needed threes, you've got that. And now another threes to wound because of that fierce strength 10, Bo. Going for the wound, here we go. Ouch! So the war boss's power claw is AP minus two. That takes my dreadnought's armor save to four plus. Now each wound is going to do two damage, and I only have six wounds left. This could be really bad. We need some big fours here. Come on, dreadnought armor, hold strong. I have failed all of them. He just takes eight wounds. We don't even need the knobs. He is crunched. Dreadnought is just choking. With my original force now obliterated, the orc surged towards my predator, whose driver quickly began looking for the gear stick to throw her into reverse. And what an absolute horde of enemies we have on the board. But I had a quick look at my resources and a little plan began to form in my mind. A Hail Mary. If everything goes wrong, I'm going to need to redeploy fast. So my first purchase for the turn was a Blood Raven Rhino, who cruised over to the chapel barracks so it could pick up a new marine squad, but he'll be waiting for another turn to meet his passengers, because this turn, I'm buying a unit who needs no transport at all. In our Dawn of War Warhammer rule set, we've simplified some of the building options for each faction, so the orbital relay isn't required to let Terminators deep strike, but you're only allowed a single squad, and I plan to put them to good use. They kicked off my grand plan annihilating the small shooter boy squad, but to give myself any chance of victory, I must clean up the southern flank, so some reinforcements here are in order. A final marine and a missile launcher. The assault squad leapt to the Predator's defense fence desperate to hold back the tide, but my precious tank actually stayed still. This absolute beast of a tactical squad has been sitting here weathering the fire from the bikes. It's claimed the objective, and now we're going to take some vengeance for their impudence. We're going to start with our three heavy bolters splitting off into the bike squad. Let's see what we can do. We haven't moved, so we're hitting on threes, and I have got one automatic hit from my big six there, sustained hits, so that gives me... Eight hits. I am. I have no idea what the stats of the bikes are. <laughs> bikes, bikes, bikes. Strength five on toughness six. I'm chasing fives to wound, and I've gotten only three. I might kill a single biker. AP minus one has you saved down to fives, Bo. Oh, one bike is out of there. Rip him out. 
They shooting us! 11 shots with the bolters and the pistol. We're gonna see if we can pile on. Oh, jeez, there's a few misses there. Fives to wound still, even though I'm using bolters and just another wound. Nothing too exciting there. Initiating attack protocol 23. The new recruit, the missile launcher. He's gonna not shoot at the bikes, but instead separate his fire to this orc barracks because we don't want any more of those guys spawning up here. So he needs a three to hit. And he's got a big four. He is strength nine, toughness seven. So it's easy threes to wound. Then we'll see how much damage we can do. Chasing a three. We've got a big six, that's a wound. And now we do D6 damage. This building has just five wounds, a five or a six, and one lucky crack missile hits a fuel vein and incinerates it. Oh, it's down the slope. Oh, <laughs> big six. <laughs> We're blowing up this whole orc civilization! Fire in the hole! Commencing attack! Who is getting shot up? My beautiful dreadnought choked last turn and then got subsequently mushed, but can my predator deliver the goods once again? We are unloading with my beast straight into the orc stronghold. We're gonna start with the heavy bolter sponsons. We're throwing the kitchen sink at this damn thing this time. So we are threes to hit because I haven't moved, but thankfully this oath of moment target, it's the building this turn, I get to reroll my hits. That has really helped the Marines so far. An extra hit, we have now got five Strength five, toughness seven, so fives to wounds. Any of these chippy cheeky wounds are helpful. We don't manage to get any. It's gonna be all down to the turret, but that's okay, because the turret is pretty good. I've thrown my dice all over the floor. The turret is pretty bloody good. We need threes to hit to start off. This is the big one. The Oath of Moment letting me reroll once again, and it's just got me another hit. The Orc Stronghold has eight wounds remaining after my Dreadnought's multi-melter chipped off four. I've got three successful hits. They will each do three damage. Yeah, that's right. Good. That's correct. Just checking my math. <laughs> okay, so they all successfully must wound to be able to knock off this stronghold. Three threes. Come on, Predator, show me the goods. Oh, he's got it! Kaboom! Orc infestation number one, incinerated. There will be nothing left to bury! With a deafening explosion, the stronghold was engulfed in flames, dealing out six mortal wounds to every unit within six inches, decimating the remaining orc garrison, and surprising the orc reinforcements with a nice fiery blast to the face. But the job isn't done yet. There are orc forces swarming across this board, and hidden beyond the fog of war is the primary orc infestation of the mighty Cogfist Steel Snapper. Tune in to our next episode to see the mighty showdown between the biggest, baddest mech on Tartarus and his army of mechanized maniacs and the almighty Gabriel Angelos, who will finally join the battle to lead his men to victory. Thank you so much for tuning in to the very first episode of Zorp Hammer. The second half of this game is fully shot. I've started editing it. I should have it to you guys in a couple of weeks. And hopefully beyond that, if these first two videos do well enough, there's so much potential with Dawn of War Warhammer. I want to add other factions like Chaos and Eldar and Necrons, my beloved Necrons. And also just like exploring how we could bring all of the games to the tabletop, looking at the rules. If you guys want to play Dawn of War Warhammer yourselves, you can get the rules from my Patreon, link down below. The first draft is up there. It's a rough document. I, I wanna kinda build this and expand it as we move through this process, but I think it's really fun. Uh, and if you guys want to support the project, it's a great way to do that. You have gotta select the Zorp Hammer or Super Zorptron tiers on the Patreon for the rules. Uh, and uh, just in general, we need these first two episodes to do pretty well so that we can expand and, and kick on through this. So uh, please share it with your 40K mates and thank you so much just for watching this whole thing. It really, really means a great deal. And I will see you guys in episode two.